Hello everybody! So lovely to see you today. My name is Francesca Moorbridger and I am the principal French horn of the Orchestra of the Swan. Now at the moment we haven't been able to do any concerts. The uh, situation in the world at the moment means that most of us are in our own houses and uh, bringing you an orchestral concert or even a chamber music concert at the moment isn't possible. So instead I'm going to be making some videos for you. Now this is going to be a short selection of a few different videos and I'll be covering a few different topics. So I'll be discussing one of the most famous horn concertos of all time, Mozart's fourth horn concerto, specifically the last movement. I will be discussing the opening um, melody of Till Eulenspiegel by Strauss, another very, very famous excerpt for French horn players. And I'll also be chatting a little bit more about the history of the horn, how the horn has been used throughout the ages, and just a little bit more about me. So this first video is really to tell you a bit more about how I became a horn player, a few things that I've done in my professional life so far, a little bit about what life is like for me right now, um, and just a bit of an insight really into, into the world of a French horn player. So I think the first thing to discuss is how and why I began playing this funny, golden, coiled up piece of tubing. Now, I was three years old. I went to visit my uncle with my parents um, and he was a professional musician and an examiner. And over the years he had collected instruments that he knew that he liked the sound of, that he loved, and that he always thought maybe he'd, he'd have a go at learning to play. So one Sunday afternoon, we were at his house and there were a few people over and one of them, for whatever reason, started discussing the hunting horn that was on the wall. And everybody decided to have a little go and see if they could make a noise on this hunting horn. Now, so I'm told, no one else could make any sound on this hunting horn, um, but little me, apparently, could. <laughs> so my uncle thought, I know what would be a fun idea. Let me get out the French horn that's hiding under the piano and see if this little three-year-old can make any noise on that. Now, that's how it all started. Apparently, I made a great sound on it, age three, um, and I never looked back. My brother played the violin, it seemed very boring in comparison. Sorry to all violinists out there. The main difference was that it was brown and this was gold and shiny. And why on earth would I not want to play the gold, shiny, noisy instrument? So my auntie, who was there at the time, um, decided to play me a tape recording of a, a famous comedy duo, Flanders and Swans, and um, they had a song called Ill Wind. And now this song was my first introduction to Mozart's fourth horn concerto, Rondo, which we'll be discussing in a later video. Now I didn't realize at the time, obviously, um, that this was gonna become probably the piece I played most through uh, my professional career, but it was a song that made me laugh and made me learn this tune. Now, I thought I would sing you just the beginning of it in case you don't know it. I once had a whim and I had to obey to buy a French horn in a second-hand shop. I polished it up and I started to play it despite of my neighbours who begged me to stop. To sound that horn I had to develop my embouchure. I found that horn was a bit of a devil to play. So artfully wound to give you a sound, a beautiful sound so rich and round. Oh, the hours I had to spend before I mastered it at the end. And so it goes on. <laughs> now, I do hope that if you don't know that song, you go and look up Flanders and Swan, who do a much better rendition of it than me, and uh, you can listen to the whole thing um, and see their very, very funny, funny version of this song. But yes, as I said, my first introduction to Mozart's fourth horn concerto, and it just made me even more convinced that the French horn was the instrument for me. I had to wait a few years, however, until I had my big front teeth. So I waited until I was eight during that time, learned the piano as, a, as an interim step, which is 
definitely something that has served me well um, over the years. But I knew I was just waiting, just waiting until I could play the French horn. So I started lessons when I was eight. And by the time I was nine, I was already desperate to become a member of the National Children's Orchestra. Now, I thought it might be quite fun for you to see an old home movie of me playing a little piece when I was nine years old. Now, I hope you can excuse the quality of the video. This was back in the days of uh, um, VHS recordings and we've managed to upload the clip for you now. <laughs> that little video of me. Um, I'm sure lots of people have probably got home movies of them when they were younger playing. I advise you to get them out and have a look because uh, it's a fun way of looking back to where it all started. Now as I said I was in the National Children's Orchestra, went on courses every holiday. Um, I then moved on to the National Children's Wind Orchestra and the National Youth Orchestra of Great Britain where I did all manner of wonderful wonderful concerts. Um, I also studied at the Birmingham Conservatoire Junior School for a couple of years before moving down to the Royal College of Music Junior Department where I got to expand my education and basically spend a Saturday, every Saturday, doing what I loved. Um, I don't really quite know how I ended up being a professional musician um, per se. I, went to university and studied academic music and was fairly certain that my plan was to become a lawyer. However, in my final year at Cambridge, I was doing lots of concertos, playing lots of concerts, and I just thought, maybe it would be a shame not to give it a go. So, I did. After a year of travelling, I went to the Royal Academy of Music and I did um, two years of postgrad, studying with Richard Watkins and Michael Thompson, and then very soon after that I won a job as the principal horn of the Philharmonic Orchestra of Santiago in Chile. So I went off to Chile, spent a couple of years playing in the opera house there, truly amazing experience. Um, we did six months of opera and then either side of that did ballets and orchestral concerts. And actually, the very first concert I ever played in uh, my first ever job was Till Oil and Spiegel, which we will discuss later, starts with a very exposed, very famous horn solo. And uh, it was definitely um, uh, awakening into the world of what it was like to be a professional French horn player. Now, a couple of years there, and I came back to the UK and decided to carry on my life as a freelancer here. And I've been so incredibly lucky for the last five years or so to be the principal horn of Orchestra of the Swan. Um, we've done some amazing things. We've done some wonderful concerts. We've dressed up as animals from the zoo, from the circus, from the carnival. We've been on tour to Mexico. We've played um with pop groups we've played wonderful chamber music concerts um and we've also had our our series of series of concerts as the whole orchestra um in uh stratford birmingham and now in hereford as well 
So as well as playing with Orchestra of the Swan, I spend my summers playing opera at the Longborough Festival Opera. I spend some time doing big outdoor concerts, the Battle Proms. Um, I also more recently have been doing a lot of um, live soundtracks for movies. So people come and watch Titanic or Love Actually or Grease and the orchestra play the soundtrack. So that's a really, really fun, fun thing that I've been doing as well. I also do some teaching. Uh, I teach now at the Royal College of Music Junior Department where I went, which is really lovely to be able to go back and, uh, and teach in the institution that first um, really sort of progressed my musical education. And I also tutor on the National Children's Orchestra. Uh, another wonderful thing um, that I feel so lucky to do when uh, NCO was, was um, probably my first sort of big experience of orchestral life and uh, really introduced me to what I could, what I could see, what I could do, what I could, uh, you know, carry on my, my career into. Now, unfortunately, as we all know, lockdown happened. COVID-19 happened and we all found ourselves at home. And life as a musician is very strange at home because the thing that I love the most is making music with other people. And for a few weeks, it did feel a bit like that was never going to be possible. The first time I think I played the horn after lockdown started was to place somewhere over the rainbow for the carers, to thank the carers and the NHS for all that they were doing for us. And this was quite an emotional moment for me. I'd had a couple of weeks where I felt like I really couldn't touch the instrument. I just felt like I was grieving. I'd had six months work, worth of work cancelled overnight. And so playing somewhere over yeah. the rainbow um, was a kind of turning point for me of, of the fact that music can carry on and that sometimes we can't control the things that are happening. So I thought I would show you that video now. It's just on a phone, it's just me on my patio, but I think it's just, you know, a, a real sign of hope. And it was a sign of hope for me that music can continue. <laughs> 